Hi, and welcome back to Carmen's Creative Cooking. It's been a while since I didn't do anything, but uh, my inspiration today was at the gym when actually a couple of ladies, they were thinking in the locker room that um, chicken paprika sheets in the season, but I cannot have it because it's full of sour cream and uh, a lot of uh, fat and they have some uh, gastrointestinal problems. Well, today I decided I'm gonna make one that everybody can have because remember in my channel, you can do whatever your mind is telling you to do. You can um, um, just uh, adapt everything. You can switch. If you don't have something, do not add it and don't think in the box, just think outside the box. The only ingredient that you might need to have all the time in every recipe that you're going to think about it, it's onion. And of course, in chicken paprika, you need chicken because you cannot make it without chicken. So don't even try to think outside the box on chicken side. You need chicken to make chicken paprika. Uh, my recipe calls for onions, two onions, which we're going to saute, saute. Um, pepper, bell pepper, you can do green pepper, you can do whatever pepper if you want it spicy, you can do poblano peppers, which is gonna get a mild spicy to your dish. Whatever you want, just do it. And uh, you need two tomatoes, it's not necessarily to put them on. If you don't want them, don't put them on. If, you, if your body doesn't like tomatoes, don't put them on. You will need paprika because it's called chicken paprika and the paprika comes from paprika. You can find this paprika at Aldi's, at Walmart, Giant Eagle, Hainan's um, advertising now every store in, in America. And of course, you will need some oil. It's not necessarily to have olive oil, it's not necessarily to have grapeseed oil, simply an oil, um, canola oil or corn oil, whatever oil you have handy is gonna just do it. And now we're gonna just start on peeling the onions and uh, we're gonna just chop them very soft, very, not soft, I'm sorry, very um, smooth, not like a fish, kind of like a big onion. It's gonna be chopped and we're gonna saute it very uh, light we don't want a lot of uh, frying stuff because that's gonna be hard on your liver, on everything in your body is gonna, on your gallbladder. Uh, people, that's why they say, oh my God, I have heartburns because I'm eating these. You might don't want to um, saute this onion or caramelize it in other words. You can just simply add it to the dish, everything together and let it boil, add salt and pepper. Don't forget about salt and pepper because that's not like a option. You have to add salt in every food that you are making if you want it tasty. If you cannot tolerate salt, just put a little bit of salt, not a lot of salt, but you still need to add a little bit of salt. I will tell you a secret, even in your pastries, if you do not add salt, they're not gonna taste the same. So right now I'm gonna pause the video because I want to chop everything and um, I'm gonna get rid of these uh, onion skins that I, I peel the onions and um, I'm gonna show you how they're gonna turn. I'm gonna put them in, in this big pot that um, I'm gonna cook the chicken paprika in and uh, I'm gonna let it boil. At the end, you will need two eggs with some regular flour. You need flour, um, maybe baking flour to have, to be light flour because you want to make dumplings for this dish. Or I've heard that some stores, they have dumplings already pre-made. If you don't feel like making dumplings, feel free to buy them and just add them to your dish. I'll turn on the video because I want to show you how totally unconventional I'm cutting this onion. You simply, you don't have to make it perfect. You simply have to 
um, make pieces because you don't want a chunk of onion in your dish. So you start on holding the onion from the side and you slash it. I think it's called slashing. I don't know if it is like that, but um, I'm improvising here. And then you cut it and it's gonna be small chunks. Of course, you don't have to cut it so rough when you're gonna do something that the onion is gonna be raw. So this is the whole onion that you're gonna use in your dish. And you're gonna place the onion in your um, pan. And of course, you're gonna add, everybody's telling me how much oil do you add? I don't know exactly. Maybe if you into the measuring point cup, um, this is three ounces of liquid. So just add three ounces in here. I never measure, I always like, just pour, 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 pour in until my God is telling me, oh, that should be enough. And that's it. So now I measured, let's say three ounces and you add it along in the pot with the onions. And then you turn on the stove. And uh, I'm hoping that I did turn on the right one because sometimes I do a different side and I actually place my items on the wrong side of the stove. And uh, I'm gonna let them simmer for a little bit, not too much because I don't want them um, to be uh, caramelized too much. How I told you, in my family, everybody has a problem with caramelized onion. They say they get heartburn from it. Um, don't do it. You can actually just boil them. You don't even have to caramelize them in, in oil because that's, that's the problem that you are having um, from, uh, from the onion. You get heartburn just in case if you, if you carm it's called caramelization, but it's not actually caramelization. It's actually frying. So now I'm gonna just do the um, bell pepper, both of them, and then tomatoes, and then I'll add the chicken, and that's it. I'm gonna let it boil for. My bell pepper, it's chopped. The two bell peppers is not finely chopped, it's simply chopped. Um, not very big, not very small, just uh, enough to, enough size, a good size for you to fill the pepper. And you're gonna just put it along with the onion and you're gonna stir it a little bit. And then you're gonna start with the tomatoes. You're gonna put the tomatoes. If you don't want to put tomatoes, don't put tomatoes. My friends are telling me, you always like give options. Like if you don't want to do that, don't do it, don't do it. Well, um, this is the life, this is my life. It's, and it's always turning out good. If I don't want to do it, I don't do it. Um, and if I don't want to add something, I'm not adding that. It's, it's always a good choice. Um, and it's an easy choice not to do something that you don't want to do or that you don't like to taste in your food. This was a tribute to my friend Marilena. She is like giving me the credit for her cake and she's like this is not my cake you keep adding stuff and you keep removing stuff and that's not my cake so I have tomatoes and at this point you can add paprika I'll say one teaspoon I'm not gonna use a teaspoon I'm just gonna simply add it maybe it was a teaspoon maybe it was less or more just use the teaspoon just for you to be, uh, to have peace of mind. The chicken, usually, usually, you have to make it with the chicken tights because uh, 
or drumsticks because the bone is like giving you an extra taste to your food. Um, it's very good. But I don't want to deal with the bone, so I'll use chicken breast. And it's actually called chicken tenderloins, and it's very easy to make. They're already pre-cut, and when you're going to eat them, you're going to have it uh, ready to put in the, oh, in the plate. And uh, I just dropped my chicken on the floor, so now I have to wash it again. No problem. The sink is right around the corner. So now that's it. You stir it for a few minutes. Oh, and I forgot the most ingredient that I'm always like the most important ingredient. I'm always preaching about it. And um, you're going to tell me, oh, how can you forget about salt? Well, I just did. Um, you put salt with this one. I'm just going to add one teaspoon. So I'm not going to have any surprises because sometimes people are complaining I make the food too uh, salty. And then I add one, a half a teaspoon of pepper. And my friend, Marilena, that I was talking about is just calling me. So since I did everything and we just have to simmer, I'm gonna end up the video now and I'm gonna just return. This is the paprika after 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna add water until it's gonna be uh, well covered in water and I'm gonna let it simmer for maybe another hour. This is after I added the water. Let's say I added about four cups of water and everything gets covered. Um, and now at this point you can taste for salt a little bit to see how uh, it's regarding to your taste. And now it's gonna simmer for about an hour. You don't even have to simmer it for about an hour because the chicken you know it's very tender and then it's gonna be uh, cooked in no time after it's cooked all the way we have to make the dumplings this is me returning this is the chicken paprika it boiled for about 45 minutes the whole meat it's uh, tender now it's it's absolutely boiled it's done to be eaten i just need to finish this gorgeous food this absolutely tasty food it's coming from heaven um now with this we'll have to do uh, the dumplings which i'm going to tell you exactly how to make and then if the if the paprika is still very watery we'll add a tablespoon of uh, flour and we're gonna just uh, mix it with this uh, broth that we're gonna have here and then we're gonna we're gonna just incorporate it in this chicken paprika and that's gonna make it a little bit thinner thicker not thinner because the purpose is to make it thinner oh i have to add it now so much i might not add it So the purpose of adding flour is to make the paprika thicker, um, like a stew. Now we're gonna make the dumplings. I have here two egg, two whole eggs that I just uh, make it very well into a kind of like a omelet. And I'm gonna add some salt, regular salt. I'm gonna add some baking powder. It's important for them to get fluffy. Um, and uh, thinking how much, you just put in the palm of your hand, maybe one teaspoon or something like that, and you, not one teaspoon, that was a, lot, a little bit too much, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. And then you add regular flour. 
the trick is not to make it too um, thick. If you make it too thick, they're gonna get very uh, dense and you're not gonna like it. The consistency of these needs to be as a uh, Greek yogurt, very, you know, to hold together when you put it in, in, in the liquid, you want them to be holding together. At this point, I'm going to add a little bit more flour. There's not like a measurement that I can tell you two eggs and as much flour some people they say um, measure um, weigh the eggs and as as much as the eggs weigh with the with the um, shell on you're gonna measure the flour and add exactly as much as is gonna be perfect to be very honest I never tried it I've heard about it um, it might be right. You can try it and uh, see if it's gonna be right for you. For me, it's all about uh, eyeballing and uh, it worked all the time. And if it didn't work, oh well, we lived. And uh, they are still gonna be tasteful and uh, they still, maybe the, the food is not gonna look as great as you want to look, but you can still eat it because the taste is gonna be there. Now I change the camera and you can tell my uh, paprika is simmering and I have here the dumplings that I want to uh, make. And usually you just have to put it in your teaspoon, tablespoon, whatever spoon you want and you're gonna drop it in the in the paprika and they have to boil uh, at this point I'm gonna get one spoon that's a little bit uh, smaller than whatever I had and I'm gonna keep adding to my chicken paprika maybe make them small make them big as I don't know your taste it's simply up to you as long as they don't um, go apart in your food so they disappear they dissipate or something like that if they're gonna became one with the water then you all good they're gonna you this is a test of the patient because you have to have patience in here you cannot hurry the process you cannot Think that you must not use your hands because you have to use your hands so you better wash them before and you put this uh, mixture of dumplings exactly where the water is boiling you can if you like the dumplings you can actually make it from three eggs four eggs whatever you know one egg if you don't like it or if you think, uh, or if you simply don't want dumplings, don't add dumplings. It's like simple as that. Instead of dumplings, I'll say, cause you have to have something in it, like a starch. So maybe put some noodles. Uh, maybe almond macaroni or like some egg noodles that's gonna be a substitute of these dumplings I don't know if they're gonna taste the same I never did it with with uh, egg noodles but you can always try so I'm always giving alternatives you never know you know how people they still want to eat chicken a paprika, but they don't know how to make dumplings and they don't want to go to the store to get a dumplings bag a frozen one I've heard that you can find them at Hainan's 
I never bought them because for me it's easy to make them. Um, but you can always try them. How they say in life, everything has a start. And my mixture is done. And my fingers are absolutely full of this mixture, which is okay. So the dumplings were made from two eggs and uh, I don't know how much flour, but you have to make it in the end is like a, a thick consistency. And then you're gonna let them boil. And if you still think that your paprika is a little bit too thin, you're gonna add one more spoon of flour that you're gonna, you can put in here. Let me show you how I do it. So this is a spoon of flour. And I'm gonna keep adding this mixture in here and I'm gonna stir it and then I'm gonna mix it with the with the paprika. You have to make it thin because otherwise it's gonna crumble in your paprika and you don't want that. So it was one tablespoon of flour. Of course you can make more than one tablespoon. You can mix it with, with this uh, broth that you have. Just make sure that you make it um, not very thick because it's gonna mix not, not so well. And now you're gonna just add it to your paprika while you're mixing. Make sure that you take everything out. And you're gonna let it simmer for maybe about five more minutes. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's simply heavenly good. At the end, I will add some parsley, which I have here. You do not have to, but if, oh, and this, I forgot that I have water in there. And uh, you don't have to add parsley, but it's gonna add a special vibrant color to your paprika. So now I'm gonna let it simmer for maybe another five, 10 minutes. I cannot tell you exactly how much but uh, to a very, very low temperature. At the end, you add the parsley, you turn off the uh, stove, and then you let the lid on for a little bit more for just everything to marry together. And uh, I'm gonna show you a plate with the presentation and uh, you can enjoy with a piece of bread, homely made. I'm gonna just present a video on that too. And uh, this is it. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you like it. I hope you uh, appreciate the simplest way to do chicken paprika. It's absolutely fat free. We just have some oil in there and the chicken breast and uh, then you don't have any excuse to say, oh my God, my belly is not taking it because it's gonna have a reaction. You're not gonna have any reaction out of this. Of course, if you want to make it heavy, you can add on top of uh, this a tablespoon of sour cream on your own plate, so then you don't have to have everybody sharing the sour cream that they might not want.
uh, this is heavenly good. So I'm gonna call it heavenly good chicken paprikash. Enjoy.